we're going to take a look at a little more complicated proof. Now, this uh, should correspond to one of the ones that you saw Professor Ellis do on the light board, but uh, through JAPE, it takes a little bit of uh, finesse as well. So this is uh, covering different strategies of proof by contradiction. And so we need to employ a few different ideas here in order to, to complete the full thing. So I'm going to pull up the conjecture here, and it's not P implies Q, and we want to deduce P and not Q. Right. So if we pull up our proof table, the first thing that we do when we see this is, okay, at the end, what it is that we're trying to deduce, it's a conjunction. So let's step backwards here into conjunction introduction. So almost certainly we would need to combine two different elements for that conjunction. Um, so if we're able to deduce P and we're able to deduce not Q, then we know we're done. So uh, let's work backwards again and start here uh, for not Q. How, how are we going to go about deducing this? Well. Uh, not Q, the first thing we want to be able to do here is possibly see there's a negation in front, so we're going to introduce that negation. Working backwards, we use negation introduction, and this is going to make an assumption. So if we assume Q and we're able to deduce bottom, then we know that not Q must hold. Right? And so now we are inside this box, three to four. How is it we're going to go from Q and everything that we see above in order to be able to deduce the bottom here? Uh, one th strategy that we could go about uh, looking at here is um, bottom can be deduced as long as we're able to uh, deduce the opposite of a premise that we have up above. Right? So if we go in a forward manner to try and eliminate this negation, let's say we want to try and deduce P implies Q, if we were able to do that and get step four here through those three dots, you know, by assuming Q, then we're able to remove the negation on part one here, which essentially says, you know, we found a contradiction. You've both shown that not P implies Q and P implies Q. Therefore, you have this contradiction, right? So now it sort of falls out uh, a little bit from this. We are going to try and get P implies Q. And so working backwards, uh, we would look at an implication introduction. So it makes an assumption P and then uh, we deduce Q. Now, it, it sort of completed it all for us right away. And it's interesting to, to note what happened here. We said we want to introduce this implication. And so it's going to assume P and try and achieve Q, but automatically it sees that we already have Q in the broader scope. It's getting Q here from step three. So we started by assuming Q, then we said we were going to try and deduce P implies Q. And this kind of makes sense. If Q holds, you know P implies Q must hold as well, because Q is always going to hold no matter what P is. And so this is what's happening here inside of JAPE as soon as you try to do this implication introduction. Okay, so now the next step, uh, we go up here and we want to be able to deduce P. If we can get this last part, then we've completed the entire proof. So the way we might go about uh, deducing P, I mean, there's a variety of things that you might approach and uh, explore through here, but one way, and it's a little hint saying these are different notions of uh, contradiction and how to use it, uh, is we're going to use a form of contradiction to deduce P. Now, constructive contradiction, again, is if you have bottom, you can tell anything that you want. Um, or you can deduce anything that you want. Classical contradiction means that we're going to make an assumption on the negation. So in order to deduce P, we're going to assume not P and see if we can deduce bottom, right? And as soon as we do that, we've completed the proof. Now, as a very similar strategy to what we saw below, we're going to say, let's try and remove the negation from our premise here in a forward step, negation elimination, and if we're able to show that P implies Q, then we're able to entail bottom, right? And so in a very similar way, again, we'll work backwards and say that we have an implication introduction here. And now it doesn't automatically finish it for us, right? We're assuming P, but we don't have P already above. That's what we're trying to deduce at the bottom here. But what is it that we do have? Well, we've assumed not P above, and in here we've assumed P as well. So the two of these combined is an inherent contradiction with one another. And so if we were to take these two and work forward and say we want to remove the negation, right? By doing so, you entail bottom. We now have the opportunity to use inside of this scope uh, proof by contradiction in a constructive way. Because we've deduced bottom, we can deduce anything we want, right? So we select the bottom here and what it is that we want to deduce is Q. It doesn't make that connection to us automatically. So you need to go one step further and say, you know, in a forward uh, path, I'm going to do a proof by uh, contradiction and it's constructive. 
right? And so here it closes it off for us. Because we're able to deduce bottom, we can deduce Q, and everything just falls in place from that point on. So this is a, a little bit of a longer proof, but it shows a few different ideas of how you might use proof by contradiction uh, in slightly different ways to get the job done.